Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be returning to our realistic solar system where we're hopefully going to wrap this up and then on the next video we'll start evolving this system from our birth to death effectively. So if you didn't see last episode definitely go ahead and check that one out first that's where we made the realistic frozen super earth which I've got to say was a pretty cool build so whereabouts was he? He was there no that was Eurotune it was Hoffers wasn't it yeah Hoffers. What was I looking at the first one we made? So here it is here. So the frozen ice world. Also, we have quite a cool moon around it as well. Hoffers B. Hopefully got a name for this in the comments as well. So that was pretty awesome. And then we also started adding some more dwarf planets and filling out the outer solar system in as well. And we've also got the planet we're going to be customising today, the final gassy here, which we're definitely going to make into something interesting. We've already got this orbit all sorted out, so we just need to really customise it and make it look great. Okay, everyone, so on to today's episode. Actually, I did a few things before um, I started today. So we've named the furthest object out now. This is from one of the comments. Um, I've forgotten their name. Let me see if I can find it. So this is from the user um, that is stucco 3443 I'm extremely sorry if I butchered your name there. But yeah, they suggested the final uh, gas giant to be called Uranus. So we've got Eurotune, and then we got Uranus here. So, little take on Uranus. Obviously, we've got Uranus now. <laughs> so, we got that one. Right. And then also, we had someone say, let me see if I find another comment. We've um, named the star Ra after the Egyptian god of the sun. So, let me see if I can find a comment for that. So, this is from the user Just Tear Space. So, yeah, name it to Ra after the Egyptian god of the sun. So, we've got that now. Good stuff. And then I also had um, a user messaging me on Discord. So this was a user Sulfur. And they've given me some uh, names as well. So. Well, obviously, they gave me some names. So, where are we? So, we need to go to Hoffers. I'm referring to Hoffers B. So, that is this world here. So, they want to call this... Ig Ig Nicelum. It means fire sky in Latin. I quite like that. Okay. So, that is Ig... N I C A E L M. God, that's not going to be a uh, fun to say. I have to say, Ignacilum. Ignacilum. Uh, I mean, that's my attempt at. I probably completely, completely. I mean, actually, give me a pronunciation. Is Nigli Salem? Oh, I wasn't far off. Okay, not bad for the own me. Okay. And he's given us some names for some of the dwarf planets as well. So what we'll do is we'll copy those in. We'll get we'll name them at random. Let me just go into Discord so I can just copy this over. That makes a lot more sense. So we want one called uh, Gish Itus for one of them. So again, we're just going to click on random dwarf planets here. Um, and we will name them. So for instance, this one here. There's a name for you there. Very nice. And we got uh, Travgus. So again, we'll name Curio to that. And then the last name he's given us is Draxus. So again, we will name you, Akam, we'll name you to that. Right, and then back to the comments, because we've got a few more names here as well. Add some asteroid belts, we'll definitely be doing that once we are as finishing touches. A lot of people like the thumbnail, thank you very much, glad you liked it. I got to say, that was a cool one, I did like that one myself. Um... Someone said far, far out. So kind of a kind of a name of our own, one of our own solar system objects. But you know what? Why not? So Bonk is now going to be called Far, Far Out. There we go. So that, that's our Sedna equivalent world. If you've got a name for that. We've already named the Ice Giant. So that's yeah, Uranus. That's that comment again. Um, Asteroid Belt again. Cool, cool. Let's see. Name... Trompos. So they haven't specified what planet to call that, but what we'll do is we'll yeah we'll, we'll name one of the Hoffers moons that. Actually no no I'll keep those I'll keep, actually I want to name that to one of the more significant objects. So we'll give that a name. So we'll name one of the um, dwarf planets that. So for labels I'm just so we can see everyone. So fittiness here. We're going to name this to. So this is from uh, the user Temi R B L X. So we're going to go with. T R O M P O U S. There we go. Give it a capital T as well. Very nice. Cool. We need a name for this guy, don't we? We haven't named him yet. Let's see. Is any other any other far 
any other names? I'm just trying to see any. A lot of people try giving names to the Titan like moon, but we've already unfortunately given it a moon or uh, given it a name, so unfortunately we cannot do that. But we can always use the names on other worlds, I mean, so it's not putting the comments to waste. So we've got one here. So this is from the user uh, Chrismo. Name the, the moon Coriled. So let me just type it in. So C O R I L E D. Okay, so we might as well, you know, we can, although it's not the initial object they uh, wanted, we can still use the names. So there we go. And I want to say that is roughly, I think that's all of the dwarf planets now. And we've still got the Hoffers B and C, or, or C and D. That's fine. I'll leave those named as that. And then we've got everyone else um, name, named as well, roughly, haven't we? So, all right. Okay, that's fine. Cool. Right. So moving on to today's planet. So. The last of the uh, last of the main planets. Let's actually just check it up size-wise first. I want to make sure it fits in roughly. So where are we? So it's actually the smallest of the gas giants. A little smaller than a uh, Polyphemus. There, so I'm actually going to make it. It's a tad smaller. So seven masses of Earth. So definitely on the smaller side of the gas worlds. There we are. Okay. Right. Now, colour-wise, so a lot of people suggested a shade of purple, so I'm going to feel, I'm, I'm going to try and mix this in with like a Neptune, a, a slight purple theme with a Neptune kind of shade of blue going on, I think. So, we're going to go with a nice, good load of bands to start us off with. So, something like that. Right, and actually what I want to do is, I actually want to maybe, no, no, we'll make it from scratch. I was going to say, I could steal some colours off other worlds, but no, we'll, we'll stick with that. So, first of all, we need to fit, pick a nice short shade of blue to roll with. And then a nice shade of purple, because we want to combine the two. So, light shade of blue somewhere there. A little brighter, something like that. Go. So these are just these are just prototype colors now. So I'm just going to start copying this and just pasting this into random colors, just so we can get a rough idea um, or get a rough build together to begin with. But these probably will be subject to a lot of change. So we're going to go ahead and just paste a load of those in, just to get just to get us an example to start off with. And then I want to start throwing in the more purpley shade. Because you did have a few comments saying about a purple kind of shade. So I don't want to go too do, too stupidly crazy with the purple because then it's not so realistic. We still need to make it look somewhat realistic with its um, visuals. So because that's the whole purpose of this system is uh, we're trying to go for a realistic kind of looking world. So, I mean, already that doesn't look so bad. Right, so this is the purple shade we initially were using. So I'm going to go to a slightly more, quite an indigo kind of shade of purple and try and use this sort of shade here and try and see how this blends in with the blues that we've already placed. Let's just start pacing the purples in and just see sort of what we come up with. I mean, it's not looking, honestly, that's not looking, I don't think that looks too bad already, actually. So let's continue to paste those in and see you know, what this ends up as. So there we go. And I think we will definitely add some more shades in as well, but just a rough idea of what we've got here so far. Oh, don't do that. All right, let's continue pacing those, excellent. Okay, so that gives us this as our result so far. All right, okay. Get rid of that blue as well. All right, so we've got that. We've now got that, but again, it's it's uh, it's a little too much. I'm just going to go to I'm going to go to just studios so we can get a better view of them. Right, that's what we've got now. Now, does that necessarily look realistic? Okay, I'm going to just add more, another few lines. Right, now. The purples, I don't want any of the purples near each other. I think they all need to be separated by some more shades. So I'm going to start slowly adding maybe a few deeper shades of blue in. Maybe just try and balance this out. So some kind of shades like that. You know, just a few little deeper areas. Maybe just in the real sort of deeper blues as well. So yeah, a nice sort of real deep Neptune kind of shade of there. So let's start. Let's just start throwing a few of those in. Seeing how that uh, seeing how that ends up, so I'll replace a few of the purples here. Cause I don't like I said, I don't want any of the purples near each other. I want a nice decent gap between these purple shades. We'll start pasting some of the uh, the bluer shades in there as well. So I'm only making a few subtle changes really, actually. So maybe to go a little more extreme with the shades. See this area down here. There's way too much purple going on there at once. We definitely need to do something about that. There we go. So that's already negating that a bit. Alrighty, okay. That deep one there, that one really stands out, doesn't it? It's a bit of slightly... See, I think that's a little too much, isn't it? It's a little too much blue going on. 
I mean, let's actually just throw a Neptune in as a comparison. I just want to get those sort of... I may actually know. I may actually use some shades here. So, let's actually go into Neptune's band colour. I kind of want to nick some of these shades. These sort of blues here. The deeper blues. So, a shade like this, for instance. I'm going to try and copy this and move this sort of colour over onto this guy. You can see roughly, roughly how that ends up. So, you get more, more of those sort of shades of blue. So, maybe actually what I'll do is I'll reconfigure the purple a bit to match this blue a bit more. And try and fit it in. But no, we could actually probably use this blue with the lighter shades that I've thrown in as well already, actually. So we'll see how we'll see how this uh, shapes up. But for now, we'll keep doing this. And I'll fill in those bottom areas as well. There you go. So it's a lot of a... A lot of nitpicking building these, but I know you guys like the process of building these from start to end, so we'll do that. So the bottom of it's going to be quite blue at the moment, isn't it? So we've got that bottom blue, and then the top, we'll go with the deeper blues as well. Oh, wait, don't do that. All right. Let me just fade out some of the purple in there. Okay, so yeah, trying to work purple in, it's quite a difficult... It's not the easiest kind of shade to... To really work with, I guess. Right, so that's a little more Neptune kind of shade of blue. And I think I'm going to copy maybe the lighter, maybe a lighter shade of blue off Neptune as well, just to get a rough. So this colour here, for instance, and then slowly fade some of these in. So we'll try that. Just replace some of the purples there. Okay. There's no way I can keep make this thing entirely purple. That's not what the plan will be. So actually, what I'll do is I'll make the whole thing just blue, actually, and then we'll slowly build off that. And start trying to opt some purple is. So now we got something more like this. There you go. And again, that's looking like a, a decent sort of Neptune y kind of look alike there. We just need to sort of fade away the lights. So I'm going to get rid of you, so you. Your job is done. Right. Now we need to try and find the nice sort of shades of purple to try and blend in. I think the purples definitely need to go near the deep blue. So let's for instance try this sort of shade so this isn't even a real purple that's actually just a light shade of blue but i think that gives you the impression of a purple so so we're about just mixing these sort of shades in so just keep the color blending nice i'm just, just copy this color here and slowly start just mixing this in with some of the deeper blues i'm only going to have a few subtle ones i don't want it being too much so you know we've got the purple that people requested but it still looks somewhat realistic with the blues because that is an ice giant after all, so the purple wouldn't make too much. The purple may work a little better if it was like a hot Neptune close to the star, but for an object where we're trying to go for a proper sort of ice giant line, I mean, with Neptune's obviously the similar well to this. It's a little hard to opt a bit of purple. Maybe the purple's some sort of unknown element, but I think, you know, that. Now looking at that, that's not looking too bad, actually. So I just want to throw in a few more in this uh, region here. What's this colour here? That's the area I was looking for. Perfect. And you still got the lighter blues mixed in as well, looking good. Okay, no, I don't like that. That's kind of, that's going back to the way it roughly was. Don't like that at all. Okay, that's fine. I quite like how the white bands are kind of mixed in with the purples and blues. It gives you quite a nice variety of colour in there. And I think at the top, maybe we just need a few more shades mixed in at the top there. So you've got like a nice little, nice little purple mix at the top there. And then just slowly... Have some lighter shades of blue just in the north. Let's just try and get those in nicely. Maybe a lighter white shade, maybe. And then at the very top. Just make the camera a bit easier there. How does that look? Maybe a little too too much purple gun. Maybe the maybe the lighter top looks better. Maybe a deeper, slightly deeper blue, yeah. Oh, I do quite like that actually. Now like an ultra deep blue. And then in the middle. How does that look? Uh, white in the middle, surrounded by a deep blue. No, I don't know if I like that. I want more of the, I just want this shade again. Let's just copy that. I'll put some of those up there. There you go. Yeah, that's more like it. And then in the very middle, I think about a U. Yeah, that's looking that's looking better. And then keep that to blue. And you've got the whitey, the more white guys. I'm just going to put a little more colour to that. Alright, okay. i tell you what, that is... I'm very pleased with the way that's looking, actually. I think that's... Maybe a little, still a little too much purple in the south. So I'm just going to quickly... Just start pasting a few of those lighter blues in here. There you go. 
That purple there's fine. This purple is this colour, isn't it? So let's just yeah, put that blue. Then you've got this purple here surrounded by the lighter blue. So again, I want to actually have a deeper blue kind of shade near that. Then it goes into a white. Then it goes back to the blue. Then you get a little more white, then another purple. And I say, when I say white, it's actually just a very light blue. But there you go. And I think that... How does, it, how does it how does it like line up with the other gas shots? Does it look like it kind of fits the theme? I mean, it definitely fits the Neptune kind of appearance, doesn't it? From a distance, you could easily see it. That one's the closest to Neptune. But I think, you know, comparing it to obviously Polyphemus there, um, then we've got a Eurotune. You know, I think it kind of fits this sort of theme of planets and this sort of system. I think we're going to stick with that. And you can see it's got... You can see the purple in it, which I think looks great. So we're going to stick with that. I think that is a very nicely designed world. I mean, I'll let you guys be the judges of that. We'll keep it with its purple trail as well, as the purple is the colour that people wanted. So, there we are. Put it back to realistic lighting. And there is your planet. Oh, wait, hang on. That's better. Cool. Alrighty. So, it's tilted on its side as well. Kind of like Neptune in a way. And that is the dark, the deepest, darkest gas giant. Cool. Looking great. Right, now there was also a comment. So, now we've finished that. We may come back and add some moons to him, actually. Um, someone said add a dominant rocky planet in the outer region, in the uh, dwarf planet region. So you know what? It's not a bad, but not a bad call, actually. So I'm going to go with that. So it may not be the largest rocky, but it'll definitely be the dominant object in this region of the orbits. So we're going to go with a random rocky. Now, I think it's got to be a, you know, it's not going to be the most interesting of worlds. Um, I mean, it's going to have a slightly eccentric orbit, but I'm going to throw it roughly in the dwarf planet region there. So, Salvi. <laughs> we, we replace one object's name with this with, that's called Salvi, and then we get another Salvi straight in. Right, so, this needs to be the biggest sort of object in there. So, I think roughly, I mean, the, the largest dwarf planets were about just a little larger than Pluto, weren't they? So, 4,000, th yeah, that, that's a considerate size for this distance, I think. Cool. Right, so we're here, aren't we? So... Is there any aims in the comments we can name this? Because I think there was some ones we didn't use. Let's have a look. Just see if we can find a name for it. Let's have a look. See, come on. Could you make a very cold, barren dwarf planet with a purple atmosphere? Well, we can kind of merge that with the idea of adding the dominant. Um, more dominant rocky planet in this region so we can merge that idea there and give it a and they want a purple atmosphere as well we can, we can make that work okay and then what was the comment about adding a far out rocky world let's see if we can find that but there's also another name for a dwarf planet there as well so actually I'll try and use that on one Did we, we named all the dwarfs didn't we or we can name um Actually, we'll take so we'll, we'll merge a couple ideas together. So we're taking the name that someone's put and we're putting it on this. Then we're taking the planet idea from the okay. So name one dwarf planet. So Dippus. So we've used that. So that is from the user Gulamor Amos Gemens nine six nine zero. So we've got the name from them. So thank you very much. And then we're going back to the comments. So then we've also got um, yeah, a prominent from the user Prime Black Pier, which is a dominant rocky planet in the dwarf family. So this is a dominant rocky planet. So we've ticked that off. And then lastly, the uh, the user Tyler Stevenson said, can you make a very cold um, barren dwarf planet? So we're kind of ignoring the dwarf planet and we're keeping it as a more dominant rocky world, but with a purple atmosphere with a moon and call the moon royal. So we can kind of merge all three ideas that people have submitted into one idea. So not bad. We'll give this one a deeper purple. Or slightly more magenta kind of purple. There we go. All right, so there's Dipus. Right. So first of all, this one's having an atmosphere. I've got to kind of try and maybe have a Mars kind of build. I'm going to try and maybe build it like a Mars in, in some kind of way of a dusty atmosphere, but with a purpley shade. So we'll try and see how we do with that. Let's go over 0 0.4 ATM. So not the craziest atmosphere. Right, and then straight onto the color. So we want a purple. Not a magenta, like a proper purple, royal purple. Turn that off. There's your purple. Looking good. Oh, I do like that. Right, so I'm going to have it slightly thicker. So kind of like a dust storm kind of Mars look. Maybe just slightly more on the... 
I mean that that's a that's a nice purple, isn't it? So we'll stick with that. So like that, yep. Yeah, I think that's looking good. A pasty is a little yeah, a little higher than a little higher than normal. But let's just quickly go to flash diet so we can oh shoot, so we can see the world in all its glory. So there you are. All right, cool. So atmosphere off. There you go. That's underneath. Clouds. I'm gonna keep them as white clouds. I think. Yeah. And I think we'll go over storm. We'll go storm and storm. Always like a good combo of clouds there. So it's kind of covering the surface. So there's the clouds and atmosphere done. So we'll switch those off. Right now, surface texture. So kind of uh, taking a bit of inspiration from the system from Spaceship the other day. He went with Planet 5 and Planet 15 combined on the um, maps here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a little, little idea out of his book. And I'm going to go with that. That's a good looking combo. It really is. That was a good, that's a good combo he had there. So, oh yeah. Just try and find one that looks cool. I think roughly the way it was actually was was all right, wasn't it? So something like that, yeah, yeah. Nice bashed up, looking good. I think it actually had a bit of water. No, it didn't. Have, never mind. Okay, so well, maybe it does have patches of water. Why not? It's nothing saying we can't. So we can have frozen water. So settle, uh, melt, settle, increase the sea level. Fill up the craters. Maybe the craters can be filled with frozen ice pockets. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. All right. Cool. All right. So freeze because this is going to be frozen. There you go. So you've got your frozen patches of water there. Looking good. Right. Terrain. How does that look? Is that like any... That little bit, isn't it? What we want to do is the base color. Contrast. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Leave that roughly alone. Right. Increase that zone, right? So now we want the primary color. I mean, maybe just like you know, kind of using Mars's theme of that sort of desert kind of appearance. But this is a lot. This is like a colder, almost like a colder variant of Mars we're going for here. But similar, but very different in other aspects. So we're going to stick with that. High elevation is okay. High elevation's got quite a nice region here. So maybe we go over deeper brown shade for those. And you got the pockets of ice. Interesting. And the purple atmosphere on top of it. So an unknown element is the atmosphere. Now, does that... See, the purple... What element would that be? You know, what would what would create the purple? I mean, maybe for realistic purposes, we'd just make it a little more... See, that looks a little more like an object you find in space engine compared to that which looks too enhanced. Because remember, this is a realistic system, so we still do need to try and keep it roughly... Realistic looking. See, I think that looks more appropriate than what we just had, but it's still using the purple theme, so that's fine because that's what we were going for. And you got the surface underneath. I think that looks like a pretty quick little, nice, quick little build there, so we're going to stick with that. Maybe it'll have vegetation one day if it's hattable. So, currently, apparently, right now it is hattable, which it definitely isn't, so we're going to put that straight to minus 200 because it's going to be cold. So, there you go. So, if it's ever hattable, it will go green. So maybe when we start evolving this system, maybe one day this planet will get its uh, get its love. So there we go. And then a random moon to go with him. We'll go for a random smaller moon. Maybe quite close in. Put it there. Go back to realistic lighting. There we go. Looking good. And then he wanted this moon to be called. So we're using the name that was given to us. So we're going to use the name Royal. Cool. Quite a minor moon. Maybe we could go over a cool little texture combination here. So let's go with Enceladus and maybe Mimus combined. Let's try that. What is that? Oh, Vesta and Mimus. Let's just try that. Mimus. How does that look? You can see Mimus' big crater there mixed in. Very nice. With Vesta's crater texture. Cool. Slightly purpley shade as well. Make it, look, make it look really bashed up. And there you go. That Mimus crater is in there as well. Cool. There's those guys chilling on the outer, more outer solar system region. Looking good. So that's the more that's the dominant object in this dwarf planet region there, past Eurotune. Looking good. Then we got Uranus out the edge here, so we'll start adding some uh, moons for you as well. 
And I think we'll just use the letter system for naming these. So I think at this distance there's not going to be too many exciting rocky moons, unfortunately. So we'll go with more generic kind of ones. So we'll go two more decent sized moons. Then we'll go with sort of three, four, maybe slightly tilted. I'm, I'm tilting them all on its axis as well. I think that'd be pretty cool. And then a few random asteroids at the uh, edge just to have a little extra little extra effect in so go with those slightly off centered moons maybe in a maybe in a combined area almost so representing a planet that may have been destroyed or a moon that may have been torn up or collided with or something so kind of a, a debris filled set of moons there looking good i'm not going to give this planet rings either right and then onto the moons again these are going to be kind of similar to the dwarf planets they're not going to be the most exciting looking worlds so we'll go through those fairly fast so i'm thinking for this one we're going to go over enceladus and Europa maybe kind of represent maybe more of a frozen frozen water haven. So not in sense instead of there's Europa. There you go. And then obviously colour wise, it's gonna be white to represent that. So quite reflective, quite white. Uh, I'll turn the contrast down. It's a very white reflective kind of world you've got going on there. And then uh there's Enceladus this is texture, so mix that in there. Looking good. Yeah, and so this and Europa combined. Quite an interesting sort of looking world there. Okay. So then we'll just call these um, just to save the naming because next episode we're going to get straight onto the evolving part. So this will be Uranus B. So this is effectively the finale of curating this system now. And then next episode is where we start to evolve it. And I know you guys have been waiting for another evolving from Birth to Death series for quite a while. So this is what we've been building up to this whole time, making this system. It's not just been to make it look pretty. We've been slowly building a system to evolve from Birth to Death. As I've, you know, I've slowly, um, or have said about it in the other episodes as well. We're going to evolve this at the end. Well, no, we definitely are. That's not me just uh, joking about we are. So I'm very looking forward to seeing uh, how this uh, system evolves because we've put a lot of... This is probably the system or the custom system we've put the most work into um, with doing one of these of birth to death videos because normally we make the system in the first part. This this series has taken us multiple parts just to make a system with about, what, 15 odd, ob 15 odd major objects. So, yeah, we've put a lot of time into this. So, yeah, this system will definitely get a good send-off, I think. So it definitely will be interesting. I kind of like that with the darker, actually. A bit of the height, yeah, I'll keep that as a darker patch. So you got Uranus C. Then we got D. I'm not going to bother naming the asteroids. And the last of the moons. E. And they're all lowercase because they're named they're a planet, not a star. So there we go, looking good. Then, uh, simply, with, it's, they're, all, they're just generic, sort of frozen, rocky moons. Nothing too much going on here. There you go, Uranus B. That's the that's the close. That's the only moon of significance is the Europa moon, uh, so the Europa slash Enceladus moon, I should say. So there you go. All fairly generic. Um, yeah, designs. Because I think at this distance of the system, you wouldn't really find many interesting ones. So there you go. And then the asteroids are just the asteroids that so will leave them alone. So quite a nice quick little build with uh, moons going on there. Looking great. Around Uranus. So there you go. Looking good. Let's just make sure it's stable as well. They should be okay. I mean, the two the larger moons are the inner moons. The asteroids will wobble a bit. That's fine. But, you know, remember, this is a system that isn't built to last. You know, as that star evolves, we're going to be evolving this system at high time speeds. So things will eventually break and come out of orbit, which is the natural progression of systems. So that is perfectly fine by me. Right, so there you go. And then the finishing touches for the system is the asteroid belts. So we will go with, I don't think an inner asteroid belt would make much sense, like a regular asteroid belt. I think a Kuiper belt kind of belt would make more sense. An inner asteroid belt, there isn't really enough spaces between planets because you obviously you've got the large the gas giants right after the inner solar systems there's not really any spot to put an inner asteroid belt unless the star had one but i mean yeah I, i'm gonna go with an i think an outer belt past uranitune all the way up to maybe uranus some sort of region there would make most sense for an asteroid belt where the dwarf planet debris is so we need to look at uranitune stats we need a asteroid belt from about 18 au onwards so about 18 to 42 so i'm going to go about 19 to 40 then i think would be a good region so let's go to rah the star its new name right and then we go add and 
belts. Go to start the asteroid belt. So there you go. Right, so I said about 19. Oh, let's go in AU. AU to AU. So we're going to go 19 to... I'll go about 38. Add to this. Add ring. Nice and easy. It is there. Remember, we are on the realistic view, so we go to enhanced. There is the astro belt laying there. So past you around a tune. You've got that debris field there. I may actually undo that quickly and actually make it colour. Have it as a nice white belt representing ice rocks. So add ring back. There you go. Hey, that's more like it. Yeah, why not? Cool. And there you go. I think that is our finished realistic solar system. So, I mean, you can take the realistic with a little bit of extra colour maybe added in. But for the most part, we've gone for realistic kind of builds and nothing too drastic with the colours. But, you know, maybe the purple's a little too much with the two we've done today. Maybe a little overkill. But we can just say there's an element that makes it look like that. We get, we'll just say that. <laughs> But um, for the most part, I think we've done a pretty good job at building this. I mean, you guys will be the judges of that in the comments. Interested to hear your feedback. But I think we've got quite a nice list here. I think we've got a good load of objects, all different types. And I think that is a very nice build. You know, obviously you've got the asteroids in there as well. We've got one comet as well, the Math Comet. Named after the channel. It's a really old name. Janitas, that's our Earth-like world. So we do have the Atable Earth-like here, plus the Pandora moon further out. So we have got a few... Um, Planets with good conditions in here at this present moment in time, I might add. So, interesting. We will see how this system evolves over time. I think for our Venus Ross in here and its vaporizing moon. So, I've kind of stuck with the theme because I could never really fix these. They're just evaporating still. That's just their gimmick now. They're just moons that aren't going to be around forever. So, that's their kind of gimmick. So, Venus Rossin, it probably will lose its moons after a long period of time. I mean, some people said increase the albedo, but, you know, I don't want them being cold. They need to be warm at this sort of distance. And then change, you know, I, I tried everything to stop them evaporating, but you need to make them more massive. And by doing that, you'd upset the whole orbit. So, you know, we just we just let them evaporate now. That's their gimmick. So these moons, they won't be around forever. And obviously the inner system, the ultimate inner world, our tidally locked Blastoria here. This guy's going to get a grill in soon, I tell you, once uh, rah, the star starts evolving, I have to say. 25 Lunos to your sun already, remember, so this thing is going to get pretty drastic. Further out, obviously you did Janitas uh, Desolaria, we didn't check you out. This is the uh, sort of desolate, apocalyptic kind of world. You know, a world that used to be hatable, but it's on its last legs, it's only got a few pockets of water left. So, you know, unfortunately this world won't be uh, ever hatable because it's past that point already in its timeline. So we've made this after it's past that point. So unfortunately, we're not going to be uh, ever seeing that. So that was the realistic wasteland and super mercury. That was it. Over the two we... Uh, so that was Desolaria and then the inner one we just checked out. So yeah, the wasteland world. That was one of my... That's probably one of my favourite ones I've made in this, I have to say. Then that obviously had a few moons as well. Then further out, it was the Earth-like world. So we've done that. Then we've got uh, Steve Blue here. This is the frozen kind of Mars kind of build we had going on so again this was quite a cool uh cool one i've got to say i did enjoy this one the mars like world with the frozen patches of water on it i thought that was a cool look on that had obviously the more generic mars atmosphere uh look on it so effectively this will be the next possible earth like world so eventually this will be green or well, if hatable it should be green so apparently it's already hatable <laughs> for some reason um but right now it looks like that i mean i Maybe we could keep the green on it, but I think we'll switch that on manually if it does warm up, because right now it is still effectively too cold. But, I mean, it's only it's not that far off. I mean, Earth experience is minus 13, doesn't it? But, I mean, if you look at the overall things, I mean, it's not that bad. So maybe this world is start. Maybe we make a little modification. Maybe it's starting to enter that Hattable separate or the Hattable region. So maybe we leave that switched on. I mean, if you turn the ice and snow off, effectively, eventually it'll look like that. But for now, it's still too cold. So it's still frozen up. But yeah. No, we'll, we'll leave that on. Why not? Because it will warm up. Save and replace that while we're doing at it. Then we had um, Polyphemus out here with the Pandora theme moon. So obviously based off the Avatar series there. Remember, they're not exact copies. They're replicas. So they do have a few different properties. But again, yeah, like I said, they are still ba heavily based off them. So there you are. There's the Pandora moon. So this is the furthest... Hatable world currently in the system. It has a higher greenhouse than the previous Mars-like world, so that's why it's currently uh, in a good, a good conditions. But remember, you know, 
Pandora won't be around forever once Sirius or Sa or Ra, sorry, the star starts evolving. So this world's time is limited as well. So right now it's great out of all conditions. Right, 91 and 36. I mean, not the greatest, but you know. That's what you should compare them all. So that's Pandora. The only other world to compare it to right now is Janitas here. This is 99 and 47. Steadily blew the world on its way to become Hatable. That's only 86. I mean, that has good stats currently as well. So, I mean, it's not bad. So, yeah, those those are the three. I mean, if you look at the zone, yeah, roughly the green and blue. That's the only Hatable stuff right now. And then, obviously, further out, we've got the Dominic Gas Giant over here. The Irikurni. That was a nice looking build. You can see there's a few little bits of parcels going on there. A lot of debris flying around that inner ring. And we've got Iotan over here. That Titan like moon there in some ways. You can see it. We've got a nice lineup of moons around this guy as well. We'll see the asteroid moons for a little extra effect. We've got the Math Comet out there. Then moving further on, we've got Hoffers, Frozen World. So there it is. Go to check that out at the beginning of the episode. So we made that last episode. Pretty pleased with that one, I have to say. But again, eventually, eventually this in theory should become Hattable. So, I mean, it's if Hattable, if I pull it onto always on, it would look more like this once it starts to melt. But you know, this this is a world that we're going to be seeing in the future. Should have its time in the sun. And uh, then we've got Eurotune. So, the, f the first object we actually added in this system. So, this was the part one of this series. So, there it is. Definitely one of the definitely one of the cool ice giants. I do like it. Or one of the cooler objects in general, I should say. That was one of my personal favourites there. That had a nice set of realistic moons. It had its Titanus like moon over here. With those little methane patches we represented with the light blue. I've got to say that is a great I think that's an absolutely great looking moon. I have to say I really, really do like that. Maybe yeah, yeah, if this is ever hattable, it will become a little more green. So we'll see that in the future, hopefully. Some of the outer moons. Kind of like the real Titan now system, hopefully, eventually. We've got this moon as well. Again, maybe this will become a Hattable moon at some point. It does contain water, if I remember right. So, or it doesn't. Maybe just there. No, that ruins it. No, 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 no. We're not. No. No Hattable. Sorry. No. Not having it. But, um, yeah. So, we've got one possible Earth like candidate there. Then we've gone to the Dwarf Planet. So, these are all barren, ice-frozen worlds. Apart from maybe Dipus here. And it and it's obviously it's Moon Royal. Maybe this world in the future, you know, the vegetation, the Hatsball. Eventually it may look like this. We will see. Then we've got the other sort of dwarf planets all in here with their new names. Thank you to everyone in the comments and in Discord who uh, submitted some names. So we've got yeah, pretty much everyone all named up nicely now. Then we've got far, far out there, the Sedna like uh, dwarf uh, world. And then lastly, the last of the planets, Uranus over here with its very sort of generic frozen moons because at this distance there's not going to be much interest in worlds but yeah i've got that europa like world here so maybe this could be a water world in the future i mean obviously that's gonna to have to be all frozen um we'll add a yeah like europa it's gonna have a lot of water so what we'll do is we'll add water obviously it's all going to be frozen but eventually one day this will become a water world and then we'll just give it a bit of an atmosphere just so it can hold on to that water so a 1 atm just a nice basic 1 atm um on there nice and simple and then atmosphere i mean it's not not going to be very interesting but it has got an atmosphere there for to hold that water at some point in the future so yeah we'll see this is a nice ocean world at some point if it ever does meet that uh point and then it's obviously just we'll just keep it as a very sparse and street cloud here nothing too insane there so there go. a little little bit of cloud too but those clouds will disappear as it freezes and if we put it to minus 100 now those clouds should disappear um eventually but um yeah so that is the um europa like moon there so we'll keep an eye on him in the far future i mean actually what i'll do is just to note him I will uh, give him a slightly more because now effectively it will be a water world at some point. Hopefully, it does deserve a little more on the interface color, so a bit of blue, just so we know to check it in the future. But th for now, there we are. That is this system complete. That is the realistic solar system, guys. So what do you think of that? So like I said, we take realistic with a grain of salt. We're aiming for a realistic kind of build. We do have a few little things that are maybe a little less realistic with maybe the purple, but. We we'll just brush over that. <laughs> but now, stay tuned for next week when we start to evolve the star itself. Because things are going to get wild once we start evolving the star. One formerly known as Sirius, now known as Ra, the Egyptian god of the sun. Things are going to get serious once we start increasing this, those stats, man. That radius, that luminosity. <sighs> Sirius is going to be a pretty big deal. So, 
Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Stay tuned for the next one. I'm already excited for it. It's going to be a good one. So stay tuned for that. Part one of evolving this system. But for now, guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to press that like button. Let's even go for 100 likes a day for the completion of this system. And if you haven't already, subscribe for more. Help us on the journey to 40,000 subscribers. So I really appreciate all your support, everyone. And with that all said and done, make sure you have a great day out there, guys. Stay safe. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.